I've got a problem. This here is my Steam library. The problem is that there are over 300 games that I haven't played before and I want to remedy that. In order to decide where to start, I threw all of these games into a roulette wheel and I would play the first five that came up. I've done this live over on my Twitch channel in order to be held accountable for my bad luck. So let's see how it went. And This is Desert Child. No, it's not Desert Child. I know my accent's bad, but it's Desert Child. Released in December of 2018, you take on the role of an up-and-coming hoverbike racer with the goal of winning the Mars Grand Prix. Starting on Earth and quickly challenged with winning enough money to nab your own ticket to Mars, you get thrown into your first race and away you go. The race in itself is fairly simple. You go fast, dodge objects and shoot stuff. For some reason that I missed or it wasn't explained, the TVs in each race make you go faster. So as you race through the barren earth or the futuristic Mars environments, you're facing off against your opponent to shoot more TVs, gain more speed and collect cash. There's more to this than just the racing, it's about the hustle and the grind of trying to survive in a world where every single credit counts. One minute you're racing through the desolate Mars skyline and the next you're cracking codes to steal bike parts for an upgrade. There's a darker undertone to the flashy pixel art and funky music that appears on the surface. It doesn't rear its head often, but I feel like if I had played a bit more, then I might have had the chance to see it. The Mars hub zone is pretty cool. There's a few areas to walk around in, some different stores to visit. I did take a stroll through the streets, got lost and eventually found my way back after stealing some bike parts along the way. The systems in the game weren't overbearing. There's a hunger system that affects how quickly you regain your boost in the race and the bike itself has a damage system, so you'll need to repair it after a race or two. There's also a whole bike upgrade system that I just could not figure out, so if anybody knows how, please let me know. All of this digs into the limited cash supply, so it's back to the grind for more cash afterwards. But that's it, it's the grind. The gameplay is the same regardless of what activity you're doing, and while the gameplay itself isn't bad, it's the repetitive nature of that gameplay. The one thing that stands out to me about the game is actually the graphic style and the music. The pixelated vibe is actually pretty cool and I, I really quite like it. It changes depending on the zone you're in, how pixelated it is, and it mixes it up so it's not the same pixel style throughout the whole thing. The music is a kind of futuristic, funky hip hop style. The one downside is that sometimes the music itself ends before the race is over, but I just might not be going fast enough. At different points playing this, I was herding kangaroos and delivering pizza before taking on the role of a bounty hunter. Each of these has the same gameplay as the racing, but it's just a different skin over the top. It's a pretty decent game overall, and with a couple more hours of gameplay you could probably have beaten it. As a whole, I quite enjoyed the game. Yes, it's a bit of a repetitive gameplay loop, but for an installer on the Steam Deck and playing on the go, it was pretty decent, so I'll no doubt play it again at some point. Here goes! The second game from the Wheel of Misfortune was Desktop Dungeons. This game came out in April of 2023, but originally it started development in 2013, which surprised me. This is a single player dungeon crawling roguelike where you fall into the role of chief and commander of a newly formed town and you're tasked with rebuilding said town by exploring nearby dungeons and killing the scary monsters. The game is rough, I won't sugarcoat it. After getting thrown into your first dungeon with no explanation and then laughed at when you die, you're railroaded through what could be several hours worth of tutorials. And yes, I said hours. With the premise of this video, you can see where this is going. I'm not a fan of reading in general, but it's worse for me when this coked out Walmart Gandalf is constantly blabbering on. Aside from walls of text, the gameplay itself is pretty simple. You click a square to move, click on the enemy to attack, uh, click to collect the rune, click, click and click again. There's like no keyboard controls. The town building aspect is nice, but really it lacks the motivation to want to progress. The only motivation I could see was the desire to unlock other classes to explore the dungeons with, but when I tried the wizard I died almost instantly. Monsters have levels as well and they're pretty dangerous. This wizard death was my only death and dying quite a few times was kind of embarrassing. If you lose health or mana, you can explore more of the dungeon to regain the resources, which is a nice mechanic. I don't mind this part. Exploring helps you find items that can help you as you delve deeper into those dungeons. When you discover the boss, it's probably going to be a lot higher level than you are, 
so you'll need to explore to level up. Each dungeon is randomly generated, but the gameplay loop itself wasn't really for me. I love roguelike games, and while this isn't a bad roguelike, the dungeon loop was a bit meh. The humour carried this game, it's all text based, but the seemingly dry condescending delivery is what does it for me, I just love that kind of humour. The graphics were pretty basic, Super Meat Boy was there for some reason, but for 10 years of development I'd put my money on it being a more in-depth game compared to looking good on the surface. It reminded me a lot of Dwarf Fortress which ironically I quite like, but this here isn't a base building game. Don't get me wrong, the game itself isn't bad, it's just not for me. Now go. Speaking of games that aren't for me, Ancestors Legacy was the middle child that no one wanted. A top down viking RTS that was just slow. It's got slow movement, slow progression and overall you know, slow gameplay. I started by playing the campaign as I figured it would be a better experience than jumping in at the deep end and drowning in the first struggle. The game starts by walking you through the basics of playing, moving your squads, basic combat and ransacking a local village. From the time I played I managed to complete the three missions. The first, a town takeover which ended in your squad retreating because you were being outnumbered. The second, a forest adventure, explaining the basics of ambushing your opponent to rescue your squad mates that got abducted during the previous mission's battle. And finally, a third mission taking over several villages and a mining town. In general, I would say that I like real time strategy games. Back in the day I played Starcraft 2, completed the full campaign, ranked multiplayer the works, I enjoy the Arbellions, Frostpunk and Northgard. Unfortunately, Ancestors Legacy just didn't do it for me. The game itself it looks fantastic, there's a cool action camera where you zoom in all the way to see your squad piercing the enemy with their spears and launching arrows into their skulls. The ambush mechanics were cool as you were able to sneak around by hiding in the bushes and you can cause distractions to separate other squads and take more manageable battles. Unfortunately the theming just didn't click with me but if you're a fan of RTS games and you like the Viking mythology, this is right up your alley. Definitely, definitely check it out. You're up. This next game is the one I was not looking forward to. I've never played a Soul Calibur game before, and fighting games are not my go-to. I've played Street Fighter, Tekken and Smash Bros before, but oh my god, I suck so bad at them. So after trying to veto this game and being told no by my Twitch chat, it snuck its way into the game number 4 slot. After looking through some of the characters, I jumped into the mission mode that's available and got to make my own custom character. This was actually pretty cool, and this is how Jolly Roger was born. A narcissistic, possessed, skeletal figure, and goddamn this boy is wide. Choosing a weapon was easy, and of course I had to give him death scythe, and soon enough I was soaking my bones in the blood of my enemies. I didn't want to waste much time taking the story in, so I grasped the main points, and continued to kick and slice my way through anyone that stood in my path. At one point, this turned from a fighting game into a Nintendo Direct, and if I'm being completely honest, I know nothing about the combos in this game. I didn't look up anything about these games beforehand, but after I figured out how to Nintendo snap my enemy's life bars, I couldn't be stopped. I felt unstoppable until I was stopped. The game is masher friendly, which is good for me because at heart, I'm a masher when it comes to fighting games. I felt like I could stand a chance and actually progress through the game. I don't know how I would cope against an actual opponent, but the AI fights were good. The mission mode's cool. You explore the world map and fight different enemies to level up your character and your weapons. I actually enjoyed playing the game, which is crazy, because this is the one I was least looking forward to. I would play it again for sure, and I'm definitely glad that I played it in the end. It's on. Going from a game I wasn't looking forward to playing, to the game that I was most looking forward to playing. As far as the eye. This is a roguelike game, intertwined with city building and resource management. With map movement that's inspired by Slay the Spire, you traverse your way through dangerous environments, stopping at each halt to gather resources, train your team, and prepare to continue your journey. Each map is on a hexagonal grid, and each hexagon contains different resources that you can farm and gather. Using the turn-based system, you command your team to carry out tasks throughout the zone, and each activity they do contributes to their own XP gain. And this is where the depth of the game comes in. Each unit has its own massive skill tree. I genuinely couldn't believe the size of it, much like how your mum couldn't believe the size of Mad Duck. From farming nodes, exploring ruins, and herding wildlife, each section of the skill tree is split up according to the task being carried out. So managing your team correctly matters, as they will gain bonuses based on their XP in each section. Each specialization increases the resource gather speed, ability to construct buildings, and more that I didn't even see. I only played through a few of the campaign missions, which are actually just the tutorial, but the game isn't easy. I did die on the third mission, which really was my own fault. The main appeal of the game is similar to any other roguelike. 
where you take on adventures with varying degrees of difficulty and see if you can make it to the eye. The art style is amazing. I love how your units take on different animal forms based on their jobs and the caravan looks like a big mammoth that travels with you. I will absolutely be playing this game again. I do love a roguelike game and from what I played this one is looking like a good one. Thanks for watching.